Hello friends. Welcome or welcome back to Get Ready With America, where the new background continues to evolve. My name is SJ and this week we're back on our bullshit talking about the upcoming special primary election in Ohio on Tuesday, August 3rd to replace two congresspeople in the 11th and 15th districts. Neither of these districts is likely to flip parties, so of course there's some good ol' intra-party politicking on both sides. I'll dive into the main battles in both districts and of course give you the logistics on how to vote, which you can do right now. While we're dressed for the Olympics today, because I love them and the fact that NBC sent Steve Kornacki and his big board to Tokyo to talk stats, our makeup will be a nice grungy smoky eye in honor of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which sits within the 11th district. If you're enjoying this series, please like, subscribe, share the video, and check out my Patreon in the description box. Let's get into it. Ohio's 11th district is filling the vacancy left by Marsha Fudge, who was tapped by the Biden administration to head the Department of Housing and Urban Development, or HUD. As mayor of Warrensville Heights, the role she held before joining Congress, she led several housing initiatives that ultimately protected the residents from predatory lending and expanded affordable housing, among other things, so HUD is an incredibly good fit for her experience. Unlike Ben Carson. For those who can't or uh, don't want to think back to the beginning of this year, Fudge's name was floating around for a couple of cabinet positions, most notably for agriculture, so it seemed pretty certain she would be secretary of something. If I can put on my political strategy hat for just a second, Fudge is a really fantastic cabinet pick, and not just for her qualifications, but her demographics. She's a black woman, and it's no secret that a big goal of assembling Biden's cabinet was racial and gender diversity. Most importantly, the 11th district is the 19th most democratic district in the country and the most democratic district in the state of Ohio, a prominent swing state. So you can show off that you have someone from Ohio to the Ohioans while not losing the seat when you have to replace the representative. Okay, we're, we're done with this. The district itself is made up of portions of Cuyahoga and Summit counties in the northeast part of the state, primarily half of Cleveland, large portions of Akron, and everything in between. There are 13 candidates vying for the Democratic nomination, but most coverage of the race is focusing on two candidates, Nina Turner and Chantel Brown. Senator Nina Turner is a former state senator from Cleveland who most recently co-chaired Bernie Sanders' presidential campaign and was one of its most prominent surrogates. She has pulled in lots of endorsements from a variety of federal and state level elected officials, national organizations, unions, the mayor of Cleveland, and several celebrities and prominent people that had endorsed Bernie last year. In case you haven't caught on, SNT, as we called her on the campaign, represents the progressive wing of the party that is, of course, at odds with the establishment sector of the party. Chantel Brown is a Cuyahoga County official and chair of the County Democratic Party. She also has lots of endorsements from a variety of federal and state level officials, national organizations, and unions, but she has been notably touting her endorsements from more local officials, inferring that she is preferred amongst the actual electorate. But she has also been endorsed by Rep. Jim Clyburn, the Congressional Black Caucus, and Hillary Clinton, basically cementing Brown as the establishment choice. 
This, of course, means that invested organizations are slinging mud back and forth between the two candidates. Brown is going to walk in step with the Biden administration, and Turner is going to agitate alongside the Progressive Caucus members. But, like, what does that really mean to the people who actually live in the district? Ultimately, nothing, really. They're both black women born and raised in the district. They're both Democrats. And while Turner is more capital P progressive, they're not that far off from each other. Jonathan Weissman, in a piece for the New York Times, summed it up the best saying, the race has captured less an ideological divide than a generational split, pitting older voters turned off by the liberal insurgencies, disparagement of democratic leaders, and brash demands for rapid change against younger voters' sense of urgency and anger about the trajectory of the country and world being left to them. Brown wants to work with Biden, while Turner wants to join the group that is pushing against Biden. And I put that in air quotes because, come on, how much at this point have they actually pushed the president? Majorities are so slim that it's the moderates they're worried about, not the progressives. I think this is all silly and wasting time and money. Democrats could have invested in a candidate in the Texas 6th this week if they had tried it all back in May. Also, progressive groups dumping money for Turner will need that money to challenge actual moderate incumbents, so they're just as silly. Voters ultimately won't go wrong with whoever they choose because it'll be a Democrat who has to continue to toe the line for the remainder of the term and hope they pick up more seats and a larger majority next year so it'll actually mean something to be moderate or progressive. Moving on. In the 15th district, Steve Stivers stepped down from Congress in May to become president and CEO of the Ohio Chamber of Commerce. He earned an MBA at The Ohio State University and worked in the banking and finance industry prior to joining Congress where he served on the Financial Services Committee. So the State Chamber of Commerce is a pretty sweet gig for him. The 15th district is made up of parts of Columbus, as well as the area south of the city in some or all of 12 different counties. It is a very, very, very safe Republican district. Minus 2008, when it went for Obama and also elected a Democratic congresswoman who Stivers defeated in 2010. In the Republican primary, there are 11 candidates and the fight is slightly more spread than in the 11th, though still only about half of the candidates are in true contention. Trump is still very popular in the area, having won the district in 2020 by 14%, and he's endorsed Mike Carey, a first-time candidate and coal industry lobbyist, because, of course, that's who he's endorsed. Stivers has backed State Representative Jeff Luray, a former police officer who works in private security. Both Carey and Luray are naming border security as a top concern, because so many Canadians are infiltrating Ohio by crossing into the border through Lake Erie. State Senator Bob Peterson is working the local angle, collecting endorsements from the multitude of county party organizations and mayors. 
His campaign is focused on farming and experience in government, and he's picked up the Ohio Right to Life endorsement, which is maybe most powerful right about now when conservatives are incredibly close to overturning Roe v. Wade. Maybe that's what progressive organizations should be spending money on. State Senator Stephanie Coons and former State Representative Ron Hood have also earned fairly prominent endorsements, so they're certainly in the mix. I feel like this is very similar to the 11th where there isn't a wild ideological difference between the candidates, probably even less of a difference than in the 11th. Um, so really just go with whoever you want to have a beer with, I guess. On the Democratic side, two candidates are running in the primary. Allison Russo, a member of the Ohio State House of Representatives, is endorsed by Ohio Senator Sherrod Brown and the AFL-CIO, so I'm gonna guess she's gonna win the primary and maybe they'll try to win the seat? I mean, I, as I said, Obama did win in 2008, so if all the money isn't wasted in the 11th, uh, maybe they'll attempt it? Probably not, but I want to believe that someone this cycle is going to make a strategic move and try where they know they're going to lose to set up for the future. And now for my favorite part, how to vote. Early in-person voting has already started and is available up to Tuesday, August 2nd. Early voting started on July 14th and has so far just been weekdays during regular business hours, but this week and weekend the hours are extended. I've included a link in the description box to the voting schedule on the Ohio Secretary of State's website with early voting hours that includes a link to find out where to vote. If you aren't able to vote in person, all voters in Ohio can apply for an absentee ballot. The deadline to apply is this Saturday, July 31st by noon. I've linked an online form in the description box for you to fill out, print out, sign, and send to your local election board office. Completed absentee ballots can be turned in, in person to you, your board of elections up to 7.30 p.m. on election day, or they need to be postmarked by Monday, August 2nd, if being returned in the mail. Polls on election day are open 6.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. Fun fact in Ohio that I saw on an FAQ. Any 17-year-olds who will be 18 on or before the general election on November 2nd can vote in the special election. Uh, if you're not already pre-registered to vote, um, that's not very helpful since that deadline was July 6th, but I uh, just wanted to throw that out there, broadening the electorate. We love to see it. Again, I've linked the early voting schedule and absentee ballot application in the description box for you. And that's it. Not gonna lie, I was a little rusty getting back into researching and writing one of these election episodes, but it feels good to know way too much about voting somewhere other than New York City. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel to learn more about voting in other states. Also, check out my last video on my favorite campaign movie if you're looking for a little change in content. If you're enjoying this series and wanna show big support, please check out my Patreon in the description box. Your small monthly contribution will help me buy more friends artwork to put in the background. I'll link this piece by Tracy Sims from Wild Frontier Designs in the description box as well. I'll see you again soon. Fun fact, it's like 10 p.m. so this is gonna get washed off anyway. I'm not sure why I did setting spray other than, you know, whatever. Thank you.